Hey guys, so today we have another engine video. We've already covered several topics in the past year, like the flaws of Chrysler's 3.6 liter, 5.7 liter, and 6.4 liter Hemi V8s, the comparison between the pre-Eagle and Eagle Hemis, and the comparison between the 6.4 liter V8 engine in the trucks and cars. Today is another comparison looking at the 6.2 liter supercharged Hemi V8 engine that's found in the Hellcat, and the 6.2 liter high output version of that that's found under the hood of the upgraded Hellcat Red Eye, Superstock, and the Dodge Demon. We'll go back and forth for each engine, starting with an overview and then look at the differences of various aspects of each, like the power output, block, rotating assembly, cylinder heads, and that sort of thing. We'll also evaluate if it's worth it to spend the extra money on the Red Eye engine versus the regular Hellcat. I also want to make another video that compares the specs and features of the Hellcat vs Red Eye vehicles, but today is just focusing on the engines, since there's a lot to talk about. I've done my best to find pictures of the parts, but if not, I've added a lot of text to help follow along since there's a ton of information here. Also, one other important point, the Red Eye, Demon, and Superstock all share the same 6.2 liter high output version. So while we are focusing on the Red Eye, the same specs will apply to the other two vehicles. So let's begin. So first off, let's start with the overviews. In 2015, Chrysler unveiled their new high-performance Hemi engine, which they named the Hellcat after the Grumman F6F Hellcat fighter aircraft of World War II. It featured the same bore as the 6.4 liter Hemi and the same stroke as the 5.7 liter Hemi, with a total displacement of 376.3 cubic inches, so that would be 6.1664 liters, or rounded up to 6.2 liters of displacement. Unlike any other previous Hemi, however, this one was supercharged. So it's known as the Hellcat engine, or the 6.2 liter supercharged Hemi V8. When it came out, it had an output of 707 horsepower and 650 pound-feet of torque. So that made it the most powerful production engine that was produced by Chrysler, as well as the most powerful production engine ever in a muscle car, until Dodge would beat their own record with the 2018 Demon. Power was improved slightly from 2019 and onwards, up by 10 horsepower and 6 pound-feet of torque, to 717 horsepower and 656 pound-feet of torque, thanks to some tuning and a change to the intake that we'll discuss later. Unlike the other Hemis, this engine is not equipped with Chrysler's multi-displacement system, which allows the engine to run on four cylinders to save fuel. The Hellcat engine ended up under the hood of five different vehicles. The 2015 to present Dodge Charger and Challenger SRT Hellcat, the 2018 to 2021 Jeep Grand Cherokee Trackhawk, the 2021 Dodge Durango SRT Hellcat, and the 2021 to present Ram 1500 TRX. As you can see on screen, horsepower and torque will vary slightly between the different vehicles. Also in 2017, Mopar began selling it as a crate engine, known as the Hellcrate, which cost a whopping $17,925 US. The Hellcat was the top dog that Dodge offered until the 2018 Dodge Challenger SRT Demon released. The focus of this video won't be on the Demon, since it was a limited production vehicle for only the 2018 model year, and it is no longer available. But of course it's worth mentioning as the Demon has pretty much the same engine as the Red Eye, and the Demon started it all. That Demon had 808 horsepower and 717 pound-feet of torque straight from the factory, but it did top out at 840 horsepower and 770 pound-feet of torque when using 100 octane fuel and the Demon Crate, which was a $1 option for buyers brand new. So at that time it was referred to as the Demon Engine, but in 2019 the Hellcat Red Eye was released for the Dodge Challenger, so then it became the 6.2 liter high output version. Dodge had to detune the engine slightly, as they weren't going to give the Red Eye more power than that one year special edition Demon. So the output is 797 horsepower and 717 pound feet of torque, which is a nice improvement of 90 horsepower and 57 pound feet of torque over the stock Hellcat. The Red Eye was also released two years later for the Charger in 2021. For the 2020 model year, Dodge introduced an SRT Superstock model that slotted in between the Hellcat Red Eye and the Demon for the Challenger only. The engine is the same as the Red Eye, but slightly more powerful at 807 horsepower. This is enabled by a revision of the powertrain calibration, which increases the red line from 6300 to 6400 RPM. Dodge has also released a direct connection catalog in 2022 that gives Hellcat owners the ability to upgrade to certain Red Eye factory parts that won't void any warranties. The Red Eye Hellcrate is $20,795, so almost $3,000 more than the Hellcat, and again, the Red Eye vehicles cost around $8,000 more than the non-Red Eye versions. The 6.2 liter Hemi blocks are cast iron, and for the regular Hellcats, they are powder coated Hemi orange. They use the big gas engine castings, so that means they have thicker walls, higher nickel content, and slightly shorter water jackets, which provides increased cylinder wall rigidity and strength. 
All of the blocks are machined and assembled at the Saltillo engine plant in Coahuila, Mexico. The block also looks very similar to the 6.4 liter block with four key differences. The four plugs in the lifter galley used for the MDS cylinder deactivation are not used. The Hellcat has more thermal output, so the cooling jackets extend further down. The material in the webbing between the cylinder bores and main caps has been increased. And finally, the piston oil squirters have been revised to cool a different part of the piston, and they have a pressure-sensitive lube valve to shut off flow to them at low pressure. The 6.2 liter Hemi has a 4.09 inch bore and 3.58 inch stroke, so that's the same bore as the 6.4 liter Hemi, and the same stroke as the 5.7 and 6.1 liter Hemis. The Red Eye has a very similar block, but it can be easily identified as it comes painted red as opposed to the orange. This block is constructed of high strength cast iron with four bolt steel main caps. The block uses deck plate honing, which refers to a machining process where torque plates are clamped to the block. This reduces engine bore distortion at high speeds and helps to maximize engine life and increase horsepower. The main bearing cap bolts also offer a 47% increase of cylinder head clamp load, which allows the engine to endure extreme firing pressure. Next up would be the supercharger. Both the engines use an IHI twin screw supercharger and both have a huge 92mm side mounted throttle body. The major difference is that the displacement varies between the two. So the SRT Hellcat gets a 2.4 liter supercharger that makes 11.6 pounds of boost. The Red Eye, Demon and Superstock jump up to a 2.7 liter supercharger with 14.5 pounds of boost. This extra volume was added by increasing the length of both the internal rotors by 28mm compared to the 2.4 liter supercharger. On either engine, the boost is electronically regulated, and the supercharger is driven off a 10-rib serpentine belt from the crankshaft. This engine also features a revised front bearing plate, which leads to smoother airflow into the supercharger and added cooling effect. Now let's look at the intake and exhaust systems. The Hellcat has a pretty standard looking airbox setup, which took in some air from the air catcher headlamp and an opening near the wheel liner, and all Hellcat powered vehicles do have some variation of hood scoops to allow more air into the engine bay. As we mentioned, the throttle body is 92mm as well. Using figures from the 2019 Challenger, the induction system provided a combined airflow rate of 1048 CFM of air from the combination of the snorkel hood, air catcher, and air box opening. I don't have the numbers for the regular hood before that, as it had less air openings. As for the exhaust system, it uses a straight through system with stainless steel headers, close coupled catalytic converters, and has twin electronic exhaust valves. The diameter of the pipes is 2.75 inches. The Red Eye used a new dual snorkel hood that feeds air directly to the open top filter box instead of just the engine bay, which actually reduces the intake air temperature by 4 degrees Fahrenheit. So that's essentially like a cold air intake instead of the traditional closed air box. Note that when the Red Eye Challenger was introduced, the regular Challenger Hellcat also got the same dual snorkel hood, which added some horsepower, and meant that all 2019 and up Challenger Hellcat Red Eye or the regular Hellcats do share the same intake system and specs. The Charger Red Eye scoop also channels air directly into the filter box. The Red Eye also has a much larger filter box that measures 14.8 liters and allows for a conical air filter that flows 72% better than the flat filter that was in the early Hellcat models. The tube from the filter box to the throttle body also flows 25% better than the original Hellcat one. Again, using figures from the 2019 Challenger Red Eye, the induction system provided a combined airflow rate of 1,134 CFM of air from the combination of the snorkel hood, air catcher, and the air box. So that's 8.2% more than the Hellcat. And the exhaust system is pretty much the same. The exhaust manifolds on both engines are the same as found on the 6.4 liter Hemi. They are free flowing and look like a shorty header. They feature double walled construction to insulate and keep heat in, which helps to lower the underhood heat and prevent damage to the engine bay. Now we can move to the cylinder heads. Just like all the Gen 3 Hemi engines, the 6.2 liter Hellcat Hemi uses a hemispherical combustion chamber, hence the name Hemi. The Hellcat uses an aluminum twin plug cylinder head with an improved port and chamber design. The cylinder heads use 2.14 inch stainless steel intake valves and 1.65 inch exhaust valves. The Hellcat is capable of revving to 6200 RPM and the intake ports flow around 350 CFM of air at 0.6 inch lift. The Hellcat also has a multi-layer steel or MLS cylinder head gasket that can retain almost 1600 PSI of cylinder pressure at full power without losing seal. The valves on the Red Eye are the same as the Hellcat, but uses hollow intake valves and sodium filled exhaust valves, which apparently allow the Red Eye or Superstock to handle heat temperatures of up to 800 degrees Celsius. Now let's discuss the rotating assembly of these engines. 
The 6.2 liter Hemi comes stock with a forged alloy steel crankshaft with a 3.58 inch stroke. Forged steel pistons are used that come with oil squirters to reduce heat. The 6.2 liter Hemi pistons are also a floating pin design that use metal I-beam connecting rods but with additional material on the beam and they use stronger rod bolts. Those are 6.2 inches. The lifters used are the same hydraulic non-MDS ones from the 6.4 liter Hemi. The Red Eye engines have been slightly upgraded to handle a bit of an extra load and features 25 component upgrades over the Hellcat. First, the forged alloy steel crank gets revised balancing for the added travel. The Red Eye also has induction hardened crank bearing surfaces and high load capacity bearings. The pistons used here are also unique, featuring high strength forged aluminum instead of steel with additional thickness under the crown and skirt that make them stronger. The piston oil squirters have also been enhanced for better oil cooling flow. The connecting rods here are also different from the standard Hellcats, with an enlarged big end and tapered small end with high tensile fasteners at every point and upgraded rod bolts. Those connecting rods are extremely strong and can withstand over 200,000 psi of internal pressure. The Red Eye engines also use revived valve springs with an increased rate, improved retainers, a different valve lock design, and there's 33% better oil cooling at the tips of the rocker arms. Now onto the cams. As I mentioned, none of the Hellcats use MDS, but they do use variable camshaft timing or VCT. The standard Hellcat uses a hydraulic camshaft. Duration at 0.05 inches measures 278 degrees of intake and 304 degrees of exhaust with 51 degrees of overlap. The intake valve lift is 0.571 inches and 0.536 inches on the exhaust valve with a center line of 109 degrees. The Red Eye, Demon, and Superstock have different camshaft specs than the Hellcat does. Here, duration at 0.05 inches measures 224 degrees of intake and 240 degrees of exhaust. The intake valve lift is 0.561 inches and 0.551 inches on the exhaust valve. Now let's move over the gas and fuel consumption. So the regular Hellcat has a 91 octane fuel requirement, all Hellcats do, and it uses one dual stage fuel pump. The fuel pressure is 80 psi. The minimum fuel pump flow rate is 500 pounds per hour or 315 liters per hour, while the injector flow rate is 41.13 pounds per hour at 58 psi. Gas mileage is rated at 13 MPG city, 22 highway, and 16 combined when driving normally, but at wide open throttle the tank will drain in just 13 minutes. So the Red Eye also needs 91 octane but has two dual stage fuel pumps instead of one, which does allow for a 25% increase in overall fuel pressure up to 100 psi. The Red Eye consumes a bit more fuel than the standard Hellcat thanks to higher flow fuel injectors. The minimum fuel pump flow rate is 603 pounds per hour or 380 liters per hour, while the injector flow rate is 65 pounds per hour at 58 psi. The gas mileage here is just 1 mpg lower than the Hellcat, so 12 mpg city, 21 highway, and 15 combined. Again at wide open throttle, the tank drains 2 minutes faster than the Hellcat, this time in just 11 minutes which is a crazy 1.43 gallons a minute. So to put that into perspective, shower heads flow 2 gallons a minute, so that's how heavy the flow of fuel is here. Now onto cooling. The cooling system of all the Hellcats feature a complicated dual path system. At the front of the cars, there's a high temp loop radiator that will cool the entire engine, while the low temp loop specifically cools the engine air intake path. This also includes an air to water intercooler at the front of the car and two air to water heat exchangers one for each bank of cylinders that's mounted inside the supercharger housing. The low temp system moves 45 liters of coolant per minute, rejecting 258 kilowatts of heat energy at full power. To put into perspective, that amount of heat would boil water in just 1.2 seconds. Overall, this system is so effective that the Hellcat can be driven for 20 laps on a 3.1 mile road course in 100 degree heat without the engine power derating, which is just incredible. The Red Eye adds to the cooling with the SRT power chiller and after run chiller. The power chiller diverts the air conditioning refrigerant from the interior cabin to a chiller unit mounted by the low temperature circuit coolant pump. Charge air coolant, after being cooled by air passing through a low temperature radiator at the front of the vehicle, then flows through the chiller unit where it is further cooled. The chilled coolant then flows to the heat exchangers and the supercharger. So that allows the engine to breathe cold air even in the hottest temperatures which improves performance and consistency. The after run chiller, which is also called race cooldown, tries to minimize heat soak. So after the engine shuts off, the after run chiller will keep the engine's cooling fan and the low temp circuit cooling pump running so that it can lower the supercharger and charge air temperature. 
and you can monitor the temperature in the SRT performance pages on the screen inside the car, where it will tell you in real time when the supercharger is at the optimum temperature for another run. Now we can finish off the video by looking at some other specs and details that we haven't covered yet. For the standard Hellcat, it has a 9.5 to 1 compression ratio, and the engine itself weighs 690 pounds. Zero W40 Pennzoil Ultra Synthetic Oil is used from the factory, with a capacity of 6.6 .6 liters or 7 quarts. Maximum engine speed here is 6200 RPM. The Hellcat also has orange aluminum valve covers. Moving over to the Red Eye, it has the same compression ratio, weight, and oil specs. The maximum engine speed is higher here, as it can rev up to 65 RPM depending on the vehicle. The Red Eye also has a high flow oil pump driven off the front of the crankshaft, which directs oil to 8 high volume piston cooling jets, meaning that there's double the cooling flow of the standard Hellcat and 33% more oil flow at the rocker arms. The Red Eye and Superstock get black aluminum valve covers instead of the orange on the Hellcat, while the Demon has red. So one of the questions here is, is the Red Eye worth it over the Hellcat? To answer that, we'll take a quick look at performance. So the Hellcat Red Eye quarter mile times are just a bit faster than the non-Red Eye Hellcats, also with a higher top speed. 0 to 60 is almost identical for all the Hellcats, wide body, non-wide body, Red Eye, non-Red Eye. Dodge says the Red Eye and the non-Red Eye can do 0 to 60 in about 3.6 seconds for the Charger. But the difference comes with the quarter mile. So the Hellcat Red Eye quarter mile times are just a bit faster than the non-Red Eye Hellcats. And they also have a higher top speed as you can see on screen. I've seen posted Red Eye times as low as 10.6 seconds stock for the quarter mile. So is it worth the extra $8,000 plus for the Red Eye? I'd honestly say it may not be unless you take your car to the drag strip or racetrack and are looking for the best possible performances. There are many improvements across the board here as we saw, but many of them are marginal. The Red Eye doesn't feel that much different on the road, as it's hard to put down that extra 80 horsepower with the rear wheel drive setup, so it would be truly hard to differentiate between the two when driving around town, unless you go to the track. So that's the end of this video, hopefully you enjoyed going super in depth on both of the 6.2 liter supercharged Hemi V8 motors. Let me know what you think down in the comment section below. Thanks for watching, make sure to like and subscribe for a lot more Mopar content, and I'll see you in the next video.